was at the movies today. I mean, I didn't know. We, we, I wanted to go. First, we, first we were trying to go on Sunday. I said, no, no, not the weekend. You know, because maybe people that were not, you know, crowd. Then I said, well, maybe Monday. Then something happened. Can't be scheduled. Couldn't do Monday. Just second, like I'm drinking this. Made my smoothie. This morning, yeah, this morning. Had a, uh, what's in here? Oh, put a whole lot of the mango, but, you know, the frozen mango chunks, you know, in there. And then I had some plums, some, whatever they were, strange looking plums left over there. Some other kind of fruit, I don't know what there was either. Put that in there. I didn't put no kiwi in there. I put some, uh, some maple syrup in there. I think I put something else in there. Anyway, but it's still not, um, it's not sweet or anything. You can taste the fruit. Hmm. Better fruit it was. Yes, I'm drinking out of the jar. I'm the only one who drinks this stuff. But I'm just lazy. I don't want to pour it into, into the thing. So anyway, so it ends up that I had to make the reservation for for, um, for Tuesday. You know, well, the AMC movie theater. This is, I went to AMC movie theater here in uh, St. Louis, uh, but uh, I don't know what they call some strange name. Coto uh, Coto Vuta, some French name. You know what I mean? I don't know, theater, 16 theaters, or whatever it is. Well, it's just so happens, Tuesday is like bargain day. So basically, you know, with the senior citizen, because I went there I went with another senior citizen and then a, a regular adult, it cost me, well, it, I had to think, it cost me something, something, right? 20 some dollars for all three of us, right? But they put like a, a $6.00, <laughs> It's like it cost me something like twenty four or whatever it was. Then they put another six thousand on it as a, as a as some sort of courtesy thing. It's like I'm doing the courtesy by doing it over the, over the over the phone or whatever over the over the, the the modern stuff. It would be if I went there and got the ticket and then you, that that would be, you know and the, with the with the stubby and all the rest of that stuff wouldn't that be more than? But uh, I don't get it anyway. So I went to see. I want to say oh move this one says tenant T E N E T tenant. Okay, let's see. Tenant. <laughs> it's like some sort of code. You know, people do that. Tenant, that, you know, who, you know. Um, oh, I just gave away something in the movie. Look, I used to do movie reviews, right? Well, let me just, let me just fess up. My undergraduate degree is, well, it's, 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 it's communications, right? But then I have English it have it's a double major communication in English somehow, and the English is like two subcategories. It's like um, black literature and also film studies. Well, most people don't know that, so don't you tell them. See, I've been watching movies since I was before I was in that seven, eight, whatever, whatever was whatever, whatever the Bronx movie theater let us in. We was there, you know. So I've been watching movies for a long, long time. I'm talking about. 60 something years, 65, whatever years I've been watching films. When I say watch films, I'm not just 12 going from, I used to be like, oh man, I seen so many films. Man, I used to go to, what's that Mid Manhattan Library where they had the films? And I used to go there and watch, that's where I saw um, uh, Intolerance, you know, the follow up to Birth of a Nation. If I think the Birth of a Nation, blah, blah, blah. Hey, Intolerance is a much better film. I'm going to get into that. I mean, at one time, when I, even when I was in Cape Town, I mean, at one time I was hanging out my, my my friend uh, uh, Peter. He was he had we were we were on this um uh, tear this uh this is early eight, this is early two thousands now. We were doing this like Asian tear, you know. That's where I saw Ichi the Killer, you know, all that old boy, all that stuff, and all that crazy stuff, and all that. I mean, I seen a whole lot of films, including the the Russian six and a half hour version of War and Peace, you know. Hmm. That was the time I saw like I forgot how, how many movies in twenty four hours when they had the revival movie theaters. Now I think they have a Joyce Theater there now. Anyway, so I know film. Then when I first came to BAI, I did film reviews, right? But I didn't do like I wasn't a film official film reviewer. I would just go when the movie opened up. Then I come back and give a review. I had some classic reviews. Whoa, man! Too bad I don't have some of those tapes, man. That, that, that was some stuff. So I know films, right? I know a lot about film. Um, tenant. Now, I, I, I brought up the whole BA thing because I don't like to spoil films people haven't seen. You should, first of all, you should see it, right? But here's what I told somebody I said, I tried to be shorthand, and, and this guy got mad at me. He said, Oh, so you know, you it's just simple for you, you just know what else. Oh boy, you know, simply is this 
uh, no, no, let me put it this way. See the film, right? But don't let your brain go all stupid crazy. You know what I mean? Just enjoy the film. Just enjoy it, right? If you want to know what it's about, because we live in the modern era, this is made with Christopher Nolan, the, 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 the filmmaker, so smart. We're in the modern era, you know? People, what they're going to do, they're going to discuss it, but, but still, they're going to go online. And they're going to go to other people. They're going to <laughs> figure out what it is. So you don't have to sit there figuring it out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a modern filmmaker. It really is a modern film. I can't explain this to people. You know what I mean? You know, you know sometimes you're sitting there, you say, like, what's going to happen next? I know what's going to happen next. Oh, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Well, you good? No, just sit there. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. That's all I can say to you. But, also, this is a um, this is like a Tuesday night, right? And um, I, I I usually get um, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Sometimes I don't like to watch listen to him live, so I get him afterwards. They post it up, right? And uh, so I've been listening to him. I had my had my dinner. I had a had a soup. I put some some what do you call that in there? Um, some some prawns. Like you all don't call prawns. Shrimp. Some little shrimps in there, right? Um, um, uh, and also oh, and I had some. I had some uh, baked uh, baked salmon from the other from last week, right? So I put that in a wrap, you know, some spinach, you know, put spinach in soup too. I'm mean, uh, I'm really nice. We're just having a really nice meal. Hey, anyway, that's not what we can get to. Let me see. So, in fact, I, I look like this when I went to movie theater. There's a picture of me. I sent it out to some people, you know, me like that. So when it, actually I'm making this little thing because somebody asked me about the film, you know, but I don't want to give me film review anyway. So here's here's the film. It's interesting because seeing the film and then listen to Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I said, "Oh, of course, this is this." Is, I knew this actually when I was listening to look, looking at the film. Anyway, it's a film about white supremacy. Do, 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 do. I'll wait. I'll wait for that to sink in. Just like <laughs> it's really simple. Look, I don't want without giving away. To, yeah, I guess this won't give away anything. I say it's a book from about white supremacy. White, there's a white man, right? No, there's like, like like white white supremacy has a code, right? Wherever you are, you have this code. You could be, but you know, that's the way they, that's the way they operate, you know. Black people, you know, not so cody, you know. Other other non non black, not so cody, you know. Some some have some codes, but their code is that don't beat the white supremacist code, right? So really, one of their numbers sort of went rogue. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> he had a he he altered he he tried to make a personal code because because basically you know he said look if I can't be here nobody gonna be here right <laughs> so so the whole thing is about this guy basically say hey and I can I can I can abuse my women I can you know imprison my child in fact my, my one my one mission on the planet was to make a boy child and now that I made the boy child I'm through. So therefore, everybody else is through. Ta da! That's it. <laughs> but meanwhile, the rest of the, the rest of the white supremacy is like, "Hey, wait a second, man! Something going on here. Somebody, somebody is, is violating the code. We got to get some people to go in here. We, we got to stop this. We got to stop this thing. You know, we got to. You know, in fact, a whole bunch of other white people knew what was going on. So they said, "Man, we got to have a test." We gotta test somebody that's like bad enough to go in here. Somebody that don't have the they don't have the trappers that we have like that. So what do they do? They get Denzel's son. Yeah, I said it, Denzel's son. I said De okay, John David Washington. Now I'm gonna say Denzel's son because I just think of him like that, right? Well, he he was good. He was good. He was good in that film. They say, why you say that? Because of, because I don't know what character. Well, his, his character in the film is the protagonist. He's the protagonist, right? There you go. Just so instead of saying hero, he's a protagonist, which is more accurate actually than hero, whatever have you, because there ain't no heroes in this movie really. Well, I shouldn't say that. And they, just, just, right? and they had all the regular chapters. They had a they had a, they had a woman there, strong. I should say strong. We have a strong woman. Look, she's strong, right? Kind of skinny for my taste, but doesn't matter. Um, long legged. Anyway, uh, they had the, uh, you know, they had obligatory British people there, right? A couple of Asians that didn't really say anything, you know, that, oh, I'm sorry, if you call, if you think of Indian as Asian, which is true, okay, I mean, say like, like, you know, like, like Kamal's mama, you know, the Brahmin kind of Asian, you know? Um, so, they played a significant role. Of course, you know what I mean? They, 
they were want they were wanting to be white, so they they were under that code, that white supremacist code, you know, even though they weren't Anglo white supremacists, they were just closing. It's like most, you know, they, everybody wants to be white, right? Because <laughs> that's where the, that's where the that's where the supremacy is. Okay, so so that's what it's about. <laughs> That's what it's about. It just shows you white supremacy. Chris, I, I mean, I gotta like Chris. I mean, I love, I gotta love Chris. No, he just put us right out there. Hey, you know, it's about white supremacy. If you ain't with it, too bad. This is what it's about. I'm not, now I done decoded the whole movie for you. Now I haven't spoiled it for you, so you can go out there and still enjoy the movie. Just know it's about white supremacy and how it functions, how it works, how and and how they could how how it continues. Okay. I just thought I'd make that clear because, you know, a friend of mine wanted to find out, so that's told him without telling him, so, you know. But enjoy the movie. Oh, oh, by the way, I, now, I stay to the end. I would, see, here's, here's what I learned. Let me say something. What was it? Two things. There was a movie they did a long time ago with, uh, with not the recent one that came, not the I Am Not Your Negro. The, it was on um, James Baldwin right? and stuff, you know, the group, the funk bands, well, jazz, funk, well, jazz, Jazz funk band of the early of the seventies and whatever they 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 did the soundtrack. So when I saw that movie, the soundtrack was bad. When the movie ended, I was I was in the aisle dancing. You know what I mean? That was back there. You know whatever. But also another time when Trouble Man, Trouble Man, when you know Trouble Man, the the, the Marvin Gaye soundtrack. But that okay, the movie you know with with with, with Bobby Hooks and it. In fact, I just saw another thing was online. Uh, Kevin Hooks' son did. A movie called JT, and you know who directed that? Robert M. Young. Robert M. Young is a bad filmmaker. He's one that did nothing but a man. He did a bunch of stuff. But he, anyway, I'm gonna get to that. My point is, when Trouble Man played in the movie theater, right? Because I saw it. I think it was on base at the time. I was in the military at the time, and the sound system was so good. So when I go to movies. And everybody's listening to the, watching the credits. Say, why well, didn't sit for the credit? I, I'm listening to the soundtrack. Cause the sound system in a the movie there is great. That's why I go to the movie for the sound, for the picture. Not so much for other people, cause I don't really into the. Oh, and this thing had the seats. You know, they had the seats. Now they go to go up there, go like that. You know, old man seats, man. Oh, so I had a good time at the movie. I didn't buy anything. You know, I could have. In fact, they even had a they, they did this loose AMC. They revamped it so you can have your alcohol or something. But I'm not drinking, so that's mad me. And you know, I never buy the popcorn. Get stuck. I'm really not popcorn gets stuck in my teeth and so But it was a great experience. It's written right there. I think I was in row E. You know what I mean? There was nobody in the movie, just the two people that I went with. And I think there may have been somebody in the back. I didn't even notice them. And it was great because it's a time of COVID. That means, and you know. People wearing here to wear your mask, right? He's going to the theater, but you there. This, I know these people. I've been with them. They ain't got it. So I'm just enjoying the film thing, you know? In a time of, of emergencies, it's great to have this kind of situation. So I went for half price, whatever. I paid for three people what I would pay for one person. And um, in fact, you could bring it, you could sneak stuff, but they wouldn't say anything. They didn't want your money, I guess, like that. I mean, it was just a wonderful experience. It reminded me when I was in. Um, when I was in Nepal, you know what I mean? I was in Nepal when the Marx, when the Marxist <laughs> the revolutionaries were running back and forth. It was quite funny. Man. But they took care of the tourists. So if you want to go to the movie theater, go weekday now, time of COVID, you have a seat, you have the theater to yourself. It's like going to a screening room. I've been to screening room. Screening rooms are nice too. Wow. Just a little, you know, waxing, you know, uh, Having having a filmatic orgasm right here is me, T, from the Pattersons, taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only... Well, I, I experienced it today. It was great. It was great. Hey, get out to movies, you know? I mean, you know, go and walk, walk and man, you ain't got no work to go to. There you go.